Hmm. Oh, hi there! Question for you. What's the best thing to do when you're a gay guy on a Monday night? That's if you're not looking for your next future love on Grinder, Or going out for a late night frozen yogurt? Well, here's a tip. Watch RuPaul's Drag Race! Hey everyone, CJ Rambler here, and I am here to give a recap of the season premiere of season 8 of RuPaul's Drag Race. This marks 100 episodes, which was brought up several times throughout the episode. So let's get started, shall we? First drag queen to walk in the room, Naomi Smalls. She's what I call the model of the group, also what I call the 90s bitch. Is that too harsh? I don't think so. She's inspired by Naomi Campbell and Biggie Smalls, and she worked that room when she walked in. Next up was Cynthia Lee Fontaine. She is crazy cuckoo Cocoa Puffs. She was just all over that workroom shaking her ass. And next was Dax Exclamation Point. When she walked into the room, there was one thing that I thought. Storm, Halle Berry, there you go. You do the math. Next up, Naya Sanchez. She is the beauty pageant queen, which I usually like the beauty pageant queens, but this girl, from start to finish, just was not feeling her. Next up, we had Acid Betty that walked into the room, and she decided to spray her scent throughout the entire room so everyone could get a whiff of what Acid Betty has to offer. And we all know that after the girls left the workroom, they used a lot of Febreze up in that bitch. Next up, we have Robbie Turner, the old Hollywood glamour drag queen who I really enjoyed throughout the entire episode, and I'm hoping he'll be around for more episodes to come. Our next lovely young lady that walked into the room was Miss Kim Chi, or as I like to refer to her as, the Instagram whore. She had a cute little moment where she said, don't come for me. But instead of saying don't come for me, she said, donut come for me, and popped out a little donut. So, already, she likes donuts. I'm on the Kim Chi wagon. And then the next one to walk in was Miss Pennywise. Oh, wait. Oh, Thorgy Thor, that's who that is. She came into the room and man, does this queen ever shut up? She was talking the entire time, jumping around, flailing about with her big red afro. Not sure how I feel about this girl yet. And the next one to walk in, a personal favorite of mine, was Miss Bob the Drag Queen. And after dry humping the table for a few minutes, she finally got reunited with her fellow New York queens, Thorgy Thor and Acid Bed. The next queen to walk into the workroom was Miss Layla McQueen. And she came in with a nice pair of sneakers. Really queen? And now, story time with Robbie Turner. After seeing Miss Layla McQueen walk into the room with flats, she had one word to say. No. The next queen to walk into the room rocking some really nice track bag couture was Miss Chi Chi DeBain. She is what I like to call the garbage bag bitch. And finally, it's Derek Bitch. Derek Barry, also known as Brittany Impersonator in Las Vegas, came into the workroom and was officially named the 100th queen to walk into the room. So after RuPaul introduced himself to all the queens, it was time for the first photo challenge. And this was a really cool one because all the winners from previous seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race were there. There was Bibi Zahara from Season 1, Tara Sanchez Season 2, Raja Season 3, Sharon Neal Season 4, Chad Michaels from All Stars, and Violet Chotsky from Season 7. You're probably wondering, where was Bianca Del Rio? Who knows? Instead, they had a clown in her place. And I have a feeling one of the main reasons, obviously scheduling was probably the reason she wasn't there, but I think one of the main reasons is there is no way you could possibly have Bianca Del Rio on that show and not take the camera off of her. She would have read every single one of those queens and it would have been wonderful. One thing I want to point out is that I thought a lot of the queens, the new queens this season, were pretty rude to the winners. Acid Betty, she's saying to herself, yeah, I guess I'll pose with these amateur drag queens. Well, can I ask you a question, Acid Betty? Do you have a $100,000 check? I don't think so. Then we had Robbie, who, again, I really like Robbie Turner, but he put his big furry sleeve right in front of Sharon Needles, and Sharon says, you're in my light, darling, and he goes, well, then move. Which, come on, have some respect for these queens. They won the show. Obviously, they're at a higher rank than you guys, so have a little respect here, you know? And then Layla, she was the last one to shoot with the girls, and she reminded me a lot of the ants that you see at family reunions when they go to take a big family photo, they're running around not knowing where to go. Clearly showed that she was nervous, but hey, I'd be nervous too if I was standing right next to Sharon Needles. And is it just me, or are all of the drag queens this season super horny? So as we all know, usually in the first episode, after the photo challenge, you get to see all the girls undress so you can see the guy version of them. Every single one of these queens seem to be going nuts over Layla McQueen's ass. I took a look at it. 
Not too bad. So now it's time for the very first challenge of this season. And with it being the 100th episode, it was a big Drag Race family reunion. We got to see Morgan McMichaels come back to assume the position, as RuPaul said. We got to see Chanel, Latrice Royale, Raven, and the best, Hello Kitty! You can't get better than that, right? So for the very first challenge, all the drag queens were told that they were going to have to embody looks from previous seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race. I think that's a really cool idea. Robbie Turner was put in the position of selecting each theme for the girls. After assigning each theme to the girls, Robbie realized, wait a minute, I didn't pick my own. So he ended up getting stuck with the canine couture, which is something that he clearly did not want. So after Robbie Turner made all the decisions for the girls and the very big mistake of not choosing the right category for himself, they headed to the workroom to start working on the runway looks. Each girl had a box that was centered around the theme that they would be portraying on the runway. Robbie tried to hand out a beaver, and no one wanted it. Can't say I blame him. Nasha Lopez was really frustrated because she doesn't sew. She was very open about it, and as we all heard in the very beginning, she was really only focused on her beauty, and that's about it. Derek Berry was very lost because he was given the Christmas Couture Challenge from Season 3, and since all he ever does is Britney, Everyone was thinking that he was going to really flub on this challenge, including himself, because he doesn't really know where else to go from it. And is it just me, or was it really obnoxious that RuPaul pointed out how shy Layla seemed, and actually a few of the other queens did too? This is the very first week that she's there. I'm the same way, Layla. When I am around completely new people, I might be kind of quiet and might be kind of timid. I really don't like it when people mistake that for shyness. Maybe you just need to take a couple minutes to get to know the people. And I know it might be kind of hard because Miss Bob the Drag Queen has taken up all the attention, which you can't say is bad. She's hilarious. But apparently Acid Betty is not feeling Bob the Drag Queen. Acid Betty does not like to get ready for the runway on his own. So producers, make sure you give Acid Betty his own room so that way he has no noise to distract him in future challenges. And now to the main stage where it's time for the runway challenge. RuPaul came out rocking his beautiful Linda from the Wizard of Oz Couture. He introduced all the judges this season. There's the usual, Michelle Visage, Clarkson Presley, everyone's favorite straight man, Ross Matthews, and the guest judge, Nicole Richie. So first up on the runway was Acid Betty, and she was doing the Make That Money from season three. I thought her outfit was pretty cool. What I liked is that it was decked out in bills and coins from head to toe. So she really nailed the assignment. Next up was Bob the Drag Queen. He had the Gone with the Window challenge from season two where the girls had to make curtains into couture outfits. He was giving me some Viola Davis realness. I was pretty impressed with him. Next up was Dax exclamation point. He had the Hello Kitty couture and I thought he kind of blended in with everyone else. Nothing really special there I thought. Maybe in the next challenge he'll knock it out. And then next was Nasha Lopez. Two words. Um, no. Next up we had Kim Chi who had the hairball challenge from season three I believe and he was giving me some cowardly lion realness and he was rocking those Florence Henderson wigs that he had to mop up from that box. So I was really impressed with kimchi. Up next was Cynthia Lee Fontaine. Meh. Nothing really crazy there. It was a cute outfit I guess. Next up we had Naomi Smalls rocking the chestless body and the middle part a la Naomi Campbell. Well minus the chest part. She was modeling the rock the boat challenge from season four and she had to carry this huge bow and she had this nice little gold dress on and the judges didn't really like it that it looked like she was having trouble holding the bow but I think she actually was purposely doing that to make it look kind of funny so I actually thought she did a really good job I thought she was one of the best up next was Chi Chi Devane and she was rocking one of my favorite challenges ever on the show the glitter ball she had this really nice silver dress on with these big broad shoulders but apparently her big ass ripped the back of the dress at the last minute but she made it look really good on stage. Next up was Thorgy Thor, and she was rocking the Cake Velvet Couture from season three. And I have to say, she looked a lot like Carol Channing, that is, if Carol Channing went through intense electroshock therapy. Next up, we have Robbie Turner, and it was clear that he was not happy with his decision to do the canine couture. He had a very, very tiny outfit on, and it looked like it took him two seconds to glue it all together. Not impressed. Next up was Derek Barrett, and he was rocking the Christmas Couture from season three. And, eh, I thought it was alright. I definitely know he's capable of doing better, but I will say, I did like the mistletoe at the end. And finally was Layla McQueen, the shy drag queen. I liked her look. She was rocking the post-apocalyptic couture. Notice how I said apocalyptic? And I thought she did a really good job. I liked the shards that were coming out of the sides of her shoulders. I could do without the nose piercings, though. I'm not too crazy about those. So after everyone rocked the runway, 
it was time to point out who's safe and who's in the top and who's in the bottom. So the queens that were safe, Bob the Drag Queen, Dax Exclamation Point, Cynthia Lee Fontaine, Chi Chi Devane, and Thorgy Thor. The girls at the top of the pack, Acid Betty, Kim Chi, and Derek Barry. The girls that were in the bottom were Naisha, Layla McQueen, and Robbie Turner. And it seemed like Naomi Smalls was somewhere in the middle there. Some of the judges liked it and some of the judges weren't the end. So after the judges deliberated, it was time to announce the winner of the challenge, and that winner, Kim Chi. I was very pleased with that. I think Kim Chi did an awesome job, and I think she's a huge competitor. In the bottom three, it was down to Layla, Bobby Turner, and Naisha. I was convinced that it was going to come down to Naisha and Robbie Turner, and Robbie Turner was going to go home, which made me sad because I really like Robbie Turner. Not so much in this episode, but I've seen what he can do, and I'm sure if he sticks around long enough, he'll prove it. But in the end, it came down to Naisha and Layla McQueen, and they had to lip sync to Lady Gaga's applause. I thought that Layla killed it. She was doing death drops, working the stage, whereas you had Naisha Lopez. I'm surprised that she says she's a pageant girl because you know those pageant girls have talent competitions and instead of really working the stage like Layla and taking advantage of the moment, she was just doing the soccer mom clap. So you probably guessed it, the judges decided to keep Layla McQueen around for another week, which I was very happy about. Now nothing against pageant queens because I personally love beauty pageants and I love drag queen pageants. And as Nisha Lopez walked out, she said that there's so much more to me. Well, I'm sorry Nisha Lopez, you may be Miss Continental, but you're not America's Next Drag Superstar. Sorry. So that's it. I thought that was a really great first episode and I'm really looking forward to this season. We got a great group of girls and I think it will be a lot of fun to watch and see how it goes. If you liked what you saw, please comment. If you hated what you saw, please comment. And feel free to like or dislike. I'm here to share the love. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you guys next week. Bye!